What a day. A couple of real-life rock stars in studio with us right now on the Kevin and Bean Show. Monkey from the band Corn, right there on Yo. K-Rock. And Brandon Mendenhall, guitarist for the Mendenhall Experiment. How What's are up, you, Brandon? Yo? I'm good. I'm good. Happy good. to be here. Good to see both of you guys. By the way, we were playing a corn song as uh, as we got the the guys set up, and and monkey, you weren't mad at us for that. I'm not. I'm not mad at that. You know, <laughs> you said are you playing I'm, this uh, on the registered air? with BMI. <laughs> okay, you know? I want you to know. All right. <laughs> Uh, and that uh, that song got you a boat, so you're good. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. With that, um, I, we got a lot of ground to cover here, and it's so fascinating. I want people to stick around and hear this story because it is so inspiring and so fun. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a best way to introduce how your 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 uh, paths cross. And I guess we'll start with you, Brandon, because you, at a very early age, got exposed to the band Corn, and it kind of changed your life from the first time you ever heard their song "Blind," right? Yeah, absolutely. I heard Blind, and I was like, who is this band? What is this? And I just got the record and just totally immersed myself in anything I could find, magazines and info, and found out who they were and, and found relatability between me and them. And it just grew and grew from there. Let's talk about your struggle as a kid with cerebral palsy. Um, you, your hand is was pretty much paralyzed. Paralyzed. So paralyzed. you c- couldn't play the guitar. And but you really, really, really wanted to play the guitar and be in a band. Totally, it was my passion, and everybody told me it'd never be possible. And I'm a dude that doesn't take no for an answer. So. And that was, guitar was the one thing I didn't want to let go of. So I just pushed myself to rehabilitate my hand through just playing the instrument. And then when I read the story about how Monkey cut the tip of his uh, finger off in a I'm magazine. I'm so glad you said finger. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that may be for another movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's let Monkey pick it up there. What happened to your hand? Yeah, so when I was 13, I cut the end of my finger off, and um, it, it sort of drove me to, um, you know, I had to rehabilitate it in a way, uh, and the doctors kind of, uh, the, the doctor, who was a reconstructive surgeon, said, what about an instrument? And I said, how about the guitar? I love the guitar. I love the sound of the guitar. And so that sort of drove me to pick up a guitar. My dad bought me a guitar. And mm-hmm. and so the rest is, you know. You I, could... I mean, there certainly are instances of people who, I mean, Jerry Garcia is probably the most famous one of a guy who had his, you know, part of his middle finger was missing. And he just figured out a way to kind of incorporate, use what he had. Yeah, and to- it sounds Tony like Iommi this... too. He, yeah, he right. Had cut a couple of his fingers off and they put prosthetics on and that's how he played and it sounds like the same for both of you guys is you just with through passion and hard work you just managed to use whatever you had available on the guitar but it, it seems like and i'm very this is what's so, so impressive brandon is you worked so hard for so long to be able to play the guitar because you don't have the range of all of your fingers being available to you on the neck of the guitar right correct my dexterity is not what uh, a normal guitar player would would have. So I tune my guitars to like a drop C, and then I play these flat chords all the way up and down my neck and focus on songwriting, and I'm blessed to have an amazing band behind me to just kind of take my rough skeletons and build them into amazing tunes. Is it getting any better, or will it ever get better? It's, it's getting better. It is. Like, I, I find it... It, the more I play, the more I push myself. It's it's a slow build. Yeah. The thing that impressed me so much, not only the healing power of music, literally and figuratively, it improved your confidence. It improved your coordination. It improved your speech. All of this, the way you pushed yourself because you love the guitar so much, shaped your life. Exactly. And I want to do this on a world level like K-Rock. So mm-hmm. to be able to do that and be here... You've got to be able to do all of it. You've got to do the interviews. You've got to be able to speak confidently, carry yourself well, look good. And you have to be able to play and write really good songs. And, and that was cool, too. Like, it's a very specific example in the film, obviously, what he's overcoming. But also, you didn't just pick up the guitar. You worked at Westlake Studios out here in Los Angeles. You, like, 
studied the craft, went to school for it, uh, got a loan from your grandparents for a guitar. Like you went through the struggles that all musicians do, and almost double, triple because of your your handicap. And full self too. It, yeah, full self. I, I love it. I love music. I love being a part of it. I love being in the studio, and I want to do it on the national level. So, was there any part of you that died a little bit when doctors would tell you you can't, and your grandpa and different? I mean, it has to hurt for a while, at least. Oh, it it hurt. Yeah, it, it definitely it hurt. But that was the fuel for me to kind of turn it around and push me to do this. And that's that's just the underlying theme of my life is taking a negative and making it a positive just like the guys in corn do with jonathan and all the stuff that he's been through monkey with the finger and i think they uh didn't you have an instructor that told you about tony iomi yeah yeah tony iomi also it had a prosthetic push you over the yeah the just it, it made me feel like you know <clears throat> this is possible mm -hmm. you know there's so many other people that have uh, you know, d disables dis disabilities, and that you know they can overcome some of the things, and and it's just it, it's encouraging. And his story, as it relates to this, is so inspiring. Just when you see the film, it's you, amazing. You, the, him growing up from you know getting teased and bullied, and like a lot of us did, mm -hmm. um, guys in my band, myself. Yeah, and I think that speaks to who Corn is because he felt such a connection. And corn speaks to people that maybe feel like an outsider, feel like yeah. they have no place. Mm -hmm. And the thing that got you recognized by the guys at corn, your tattoos on your back, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah, we That's should we should mention right. that, Brandon. We, what do you have? What do you have on your back? We need to take a break. We oh, you're the bad man. We you're the man. bad man. We're talking. We tats. need to take a quick break, and then we'll come back. And we'll <laughs> talk right, about but, the tattoos and you two. How but you? But let me hit this. Let me hit this before yes. the break. Uh, we're talking to Monkey from Corn. We're talking to Brandon Mendenhall from his band, the Mendenhall Experiment. The movie we're referring to is called Mind Over Matter. It is available digitally and on DVD today. When we come back, we'll tell you more about the movie and also give you a chance to go to the red carpet event that's happening Monday in Hollywood with these guys as well. So more in a moment right after this on K-Rock. Uh, you know, we talked about how Brandon first uh, became aware of Corn. Monkey, when did you first become aware of Brandon? Um, I think we were just talking about this. I thought it was in Ohio that I met you, but you were saying that it's in Peoria, Illinois. Yeah, it was Peoria at a show. I showed up super early because I wanted to meet the dudes. I've got this crazy corn tattoo on my back. It's like a spray paint mural with monkey on my right shoulder and head on my left, so like how they would be on stage with the corn logo in the middle and the <laughs> It's impressive. In, yeah. In, yeah. In, in spray paint text. Now, let me just ask you a question because it seem, because there are millions of fans out there that want to meet somebody in a band. So you that you would just go super early, stay super late. Is that the key to it? Uh, well, that's what I thought the key was, and just so happened they saw me from a window of their bus and sent one of the texts out to come find me and threw me in a room with them, and I was completely starstruck. Oh like, my god! Couldn't even talk. So, monkey, tell me what's going through your mind, and I'm sure you've had this happen many times over the years when you see crazy corn tattoos do you think oh this is such an honor or do you think this guy is a weirdo <laughs> <laughs> at first i used to think they're, they're really weird <laughs> and then i thought you know this the music's starting to resonate with people people are understanding the message and and where we come from and and who we are as people and it, it started maybe into th the third year yeah. when when the band was on tour and stuff like these people like this is a this music has become bigger than us. Yeah. That and, seems like it was message. a surprise to you. It was. It was. It was, yeah. And then now even still when I see, you know, people with tattoos, I'm like, th th that's really cool, you know. Yeah, it's inspiring. It Monkey, is inspiring. Monkey, who, uh, who was that for you when you were coming up? Like, who was the rock star that you idolized enough that you might have gotten a tattoo of? Um, I might have gotten a tattoo of uh, Steve Vai, mm -hmm. or, or like because he was a, such a big inspiration He's for a me. God. He's just like he can make any emotion come through the guitar, yeah. and that is. And have real... you become friends with him? Uh, you know, I, we we see each other, um, do charity events, and some mm -hmm. such things like that together. And and uh, Steve uh, Vai played a huge part in this film, and didn't even know it probably, right? With the guitar. Yeah, the guitar I gave to Monkey was like the old Ibanez universe. But the ones they had were all beat up, and I had one that was pretty mint. 
and she signed it for me, but I always felt like it was better in the hands of Monkey. And when he didn't give up on the band when Brian left, I wanted to give it to him as a thank you for like overcoming and continuing my favorite band. And you and played it's that on me. Yeah, and you played that on tour. Yeah, I played that guitar. on tour every night because it was so inspiring that he's giving me a guitar that was signed by Steve, who right. one of my all-time favorite guitar players, and and then it came full circle. Yeah, because you wound and up and he gave it back to me. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. That's awesome. Or gave it to me. Yeah. Brandon, I have two things I want to talk to you about because I know we're going to run out of time fast. One is let's talk about your band for a little bit because you had you had a little bit of trouble because like all new bands, there's so many hoops you have to jump through to try to make it in Los Angeles, play in the strip, and everything like that. You had members come and go, but you ended up with a great group of guys. And your band is doing really, really well right now, the Mendenhall Experiment, right? You play a lot around town still? Yeah, we played last night. We played the Five Star Bar downtown LA. Th- that's fantastic. That's just... and, and you got a, and you got obviously you signed a label deal six years from the the day of your very first concert, which is amazing. Unreal. And I asked uh, if we could pull a clip because you're up on all the streaming services. I thought it might be fun to hear a little bit of the Mendenhall Experiment here on K Rock. And I think this is a little bit of the song called "Seize the Day." What do you want to tell us about it, Brandon? Uh, Seize the Day is like you know it's a single, but it, it's also kind of a mantra for us, like. Go out there and seize the day. Make make every day count, because you never know when it's all going to be over for you. All right, let's hear a little of that. It's a great song, dude. Mm-hmm. It's a great song. And the other half of my question is, tell me about the work that you do with other people with disabilities. What's that all about? So I'm on the board of governors for uh, UCPLA, United Cerebral Palsy of Los Angeles. And uh, I'm basically just like an ambassador for uh, uh, people with disabilities. I go out and do as much charity work as I can to inspire and help the youth and Anybody with disabilities and anybody that interacts with people with disabilities trying to end the stigma that I went through growing up. But, like, people with disabilities are much more capable than society gives them credit for. It must be so strange for you to have been made fun of this for your whole life, and now you're on the other side of it being an inspiration to other people who know what that is. Yeah, and and that was my goal with with the whole thing, to take the negative and turn it into a positive. You know, one of the most... One of the most interesting parts of the film is when you go to, and your band goes to play with, um, for like a home for with disabilities and the way to see everybody interact with it's incredible the music and it's so touching and it just it shows how it comes full circle. You can feel the hope in those scenes too from people who are seeing him go out there and do something that he's been told he couldn't do. Right, you can see the people that are watching and uh, meeting you in the meet and greet after. Mm -hmm. Randy just makes me feel like a loser. I got to be honest. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) you know, I got here, man. If the shoe fits, (laughs) I got a ukulele last year, Brandon, and I'm convinced that I'm going to be a great ukulele player. Haven't made, haven't had one lesson yet, and I'm looking at what you went through to play the guitar. And I'm doing nothing over here. I just, I, again, I feel like a garbage person now. Just play it. Figure it out. <laughs> just play it, Bean. Brandon, All right. he is saying aloha a lot. So I am saying that, aloha. Is that nice. a good way to get into the ukulele? <laughs> I think so. Just aloha. Uh, <laughs> before we run out of time, Monkey, tell me what's new with corn. What's going on with you guys? We are working. I, I can't say. Uh, <laughs> I'm not supposed to say, but it's really good. <laughs> Uh, so you're, you're working. I you're in the studio. That, in the studio. <laughs> oh, 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 anyways, you're in the studio. It's going to be out later this year. All right. Okay. Whatever Great. it is. Whatever, Whatever it is. It sure. Is. Sure. Uh, and it's really good. And it's and then a tour. It's in the process. Maybe after maybe, that. Maybe maybe okay. tour with Keep whatever it, it is. Pretty mm-hmm. tight to the okay. chest with right. other people <laughs> really? running around. Okay. And open mic. <laughs> What's the uh, <laughs> with uh, with us? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, well, I see what you just did, out, huh? Brandon. What's <laughs> nice. the event uh, Monday night, Monkey? You're going to be there at the exclusive yeah. VIP LA Red Carpet premiere of Mind Over Matter in Beverly Hills. That's right. We're going to show the film to some close friends and celebrate Brandon's success. 
in all of this and show people his courage. And we're really proud of him. Okay. And like I said, when you sat down, we've all seen the movie and we all give it all the thumbs up. So It's so great. inspirational. It, it really is. is. So right. good. Yeah. Check this out, you guys. You're really going to love it. Monkey, I know we'll see you again. Brandon, I hope we see you again as well. And congratulations. Continued success with the Mendenhall Experiment. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. You.